Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. My name is Serge. Joining me today, I've got a Nelly. Hey, I'm here. I got a Wheeler. Hi. And we got a James on tech. I don't have Doritos today. Oh. Mm. Whose Ow. fault's that? <laughs> I don't know. They just, the bag just disappeared. Interesting. <laughs> Was it you? No, because I also went to go and have Doritos one day, and there were none left. Yeah, I think somebody just took the whole bag. I There's blame eighteen of us. The whole. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you want to buy us more Doritos, Patreon.com/slash Loading Ready Run. Mm. We can't do this without you and all of your support. Welcome to part two of our Bloomboro set review. A reminder that our set reviews are not exhaustive. We talk about the cards that we think are relevant to the format, or that we think you're going to talk about, and a sprinkling of the commander cards. Now. Cards that you want to talk about. It turns out we missed a card in blue. So I'm going to throw over to Wheeler to start us off with that one. Kitsa Otterball Elite. For one and a blue, a 1-3 legendary Otter Wizard with Vigilance, Prowess, Tap, draw a card, then discard a card, and pay two generic, tap, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Activate only if Kitsa's power is three or greater. Uh, this is a looter that also has vigilance and prowess and the ability to copy spells. That's a lot of text, um, which is why we're talking about it. It's a weird card. Looters have kind of an odd spot in our format. The only two that really see a lot of play are um, JVP, like Baby Jace, uh, actual literal Baby Jace, <laughs> and um, Vohar, Voldalian. So I'm moving around who's like a, a looter that when you loot away spells, you get to drain your opponent, but you can also sacrifice it and flashback a spell effectively. So, you know, those cards do show up uh, mostly in Reanimator, uh, but that's it. Like, there's no real merfolk looter, actual factual merfolk looter. Um, this card is closer to actual factual merfolk looter than the other two, but that last ability is pretty interesting for Reanimator because Reanimator is typically a card that does cast multiple spells. And the way that, you know, the stack works is that the second prowess trigger is going to resolve before the actual spell. So if you go like careful study, put my big idiot into the bin, reanimate prowess trigger, hold priority, copy reanimate to target something else. Uh, is pretty spicy. And that exact play pattern might kill you due to the life loss of reanimate. But, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be reanimate. Copying a, a duress or an opt uh, or a fatal push is also quite nice. I don't think I'd play this outside of reanimator. And I don't think I'd play it in any, or uh, I don't think I'd play it anywhere. I don't think I'd play it in every reanimator build. But it is a nice one to think about if you want to have more kind of little dorks around for stuff like soul exchange or stitch together like additional reanimation spells that don't always get in, but tend to get into the versions with more creatures. Sick. Yeah. I could maybe see trying it in Blitzball. Uh, in Is it Blitz? Where Blitzball. Blitz ball. Ball. Yeah, I looked yeah. at the ball. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, turn three, cast your Ponder, then go to combat, put your Lightning Bolt on the stack, and then bolt two of their blockers. Like, it's maybe too cute, but yeah, the, I could see trying it. The spots where this does everything feel really powerful. Yeah. I just... Also, just, it's just a 1-3. Mm. Yeah, and it's legendary. But it's a 2-drop. Yeah. All right, back to our regularly scheduled set review now. Today we're going to be covering gold, green, and the remaining cards. I don't know how many artifacts or lands, but technically they're here today. Nelly, start us off with the green cards. It's Clifftop Lookout. Two and a green for a 1-2 Frog Scout with Reach and... When Clifftop Lookout enters, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, years ago, Wood Elves was actually a pretty common go-to in Canadian Highlander and, like, one of the few, you know, kind of ramp-relevant, medium-costed creatures that could see see play. Um, you, you pay three mana, you get a blocker, and you get another land into play. And this does all that with the weird caveat that, like, you don't get to choose how you're fixing your mana because, like, you can't go get a forest that's a triome or whatever to make sure you have all your colors. Instead, you just get whatever land is closest to the top of your library. But that could be something better than a forest, like a Field of the Dead um, or Valakut in your Scapeshift deck if that's what you want. 
And yeah, I could maybe see trying this in Scape Shift. Scape Shift, I'm currently I've been playing uh, a bunch in the past week, um, Teamer version, and I have a lot. I have a whole overhaul I'm planning for it. So I could see trying this out. It has reach, so it succeeds at blocking like everything. It might even block incoming like one one spirit tokens multiple times. So I can't ask for any more from the blocker. Um, it is a stretch in our format to pay three mana for this in, in the year of our Lord 2024. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there might be like one or and or two homes Especially for this card. Wood Elves could just find Surveil lands. Yeah. And that's pretty huge. Yeah. Like that's wild. And like, or the untapped land for like the pod decks occasionally play Wood Elves because they're just so mana hungry and it's a three drop to turn to. For sure. Well, four drop. And the Wood Elves land also comes into play untapped, yes, right? Like, yeah, that's yes. relevant, especially for the pod yeah. chain. Legitimate downside to Clifftop Lookout. Scape Shift is a deck that has to count very carefully the number of mountains that are remaining in the mm -hmm. deck and hitting Valakit. So there's a very real chance that Clifftop Lookout just bricks you. Hitting um, Valakit can be okay. Or, <laughs> getting, getting your Valakit can be okay. You just sacrifice your six other Everything lands. else. But yeah, and then you sell your triggers. But. I mean, the Triumphs and the Surveil lands make there it There are more little, mountains now. Yeah, yeah it's not but, as bad as it used yeah. to be. I will say my current build isn't playing Wood Elves, but like, I don't know, this guy's reach. All right, next up, the Curious Forager. This is a three mana, three, two squirrel druid for two and a green. When it enters, you may forage. A reminder, forage is you may sacrifice a food or exile three cards from your graveyard. When you do, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is a, another copy of Eternal Witness, kind of. Uh, it's easier to cast because it's not green green, but it only brings back a permanent and only if you're also eating more cards out of your graveyard. So if you're looking for flexibility on that, uh, maybe if you're more of a green splash and a green base deck and you want more redundancy and eternal witness, you've got the Curious Forager. You probably want to play both. And maybe this is like the third one you're playing. You got the Eternal Witness. You have the four man Eternal Witness, whose name I can't remember. Timeless Witness. Timeless Witness. And then this, but uh, more redundancy in this particular set is kind of cool. It's a druid, which might be relevant to exactly Jeremy White. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, in the food deck, I kind of like this. It's see a this non legendary a, card. Yeah, I could see this as a consideration in food fight. It, it because doesn't a three, two, make three. a food, though. Yeah, right. but it eats a food. Everybody likes doing that, right? I There's guess. so many times that I, I could eat play, a food right now. Yeah, food. You, the, I don't think the food deck struggles at making food. It's where it falls short is converting its food into things that are relevant and that are not a, like a legendary creature. I mean, the legendary creature is the biggest weakness of that deck, 100%. I'm curious about that. Ha ha. Right, the name. It's a forager. That's <laughs> mm. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. Anyways, shall we move on, Wheeler? From the Commander product, we have Gourmand's Talent, uh, a green enchantment that's a class for a single green. Level one, during your turn, artifacts you control are food in addition to their other types and thus have two tap, sack this artifact, you gain three life. Level two, for two and a green. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, create a 3-3 green raccoon token. Uh, that's it. I skipped on the word creature. It's a creature. Uh, and then level three for three in a green. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control. Uh, this is a card that has the word food on it and makes yeah. everything food. And then when you food, you get a dude. <laughs> so your food turns into dudes and it's a one mana card. There are several downsides with this card that lead me to not like it, where my artifacts that aren't food are now food. In the food deck, most of your artifacts are food. Like, you can generate clues and treasure tokens or whatever. Like, like the but, first chapter is just reminder text? Yeah. <laughs> just like, hey, this is what your deck's trying to do. And, like, maybe cracking your mocks for three life is kind of cool, but it's not, you know, a huge selling point. Uh, the second level is quite good. Um, it triggers on both your turn and your opponent's turn and making three threes uh, off of any life gain, not even like cracking the food. So stuff like scavenging ooze running around or just lifelink or whatever, or they decide to swords one of your blockers and you're like, oh, I gain, I get a three, three. And they're like, oh, well, okay then. Uh, pretty good. And then the other level, level three, 
can really start to take over the game considering you have so many tokens in that deck. So it's kind of tough because it's a one mana card, but the first level doesn't really do anything. If I may, yeah. I want to disagree with you on that one. Okay. I think the first one, there are a number of cards in the food deck that care when you sacrifice a food. Yes. So having your treasure tokens also be food, oh, yeah. when you sack them, you can get way more payoff for those payloads from your clues, from your treasures and stuff. And you, you get a little bit more upside than you think. You're not wrong in saying it doesn't provide a huge amount of value, but there's a lot more incidental upside to that than you think. That is very cute. Premier food pilot of the format here <laughs> with a hot take. <laughs> I mean, that part is cute. Yeah. But also... It's a, that's a, It'll come a up. lot it, of good. It, it will, will come, come up. up, yeah. But that's a lot of like, okay, so check it. I have a card that has also <laughs> made these treasure tokens, and now I have this other card that cares about me sacrificing food. Mm. And then this third card has now made these treasure. <laughs> um, it's just not dead. I, that's that's the only thing I want to add. It's not. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not exactly reminder text. Yeah. yeah. But my at, I built food recently, and uh, boy. Does that deck have so many cards now? You're now at the point where yeah. there are too oh, many yeah. cards. Yeah. And so I don't know if this makes the like it I don't think it makes the deck is my take for it. But if it if there ends up being a food deck that is like trimming some of the colors or like goes hard on just game object generation outside of food, then I can see this card, you know, maybe getting a pass there. Mm. Is there also some sort of engine? It just says once each turn, right? It's yeah. like it doesn't make an artifact creature token because if it did, then it would also be a food and yes. then you could just like yeah. spin your wheels and circus music plays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm always just looking for ways to do no, powerful. No, fair, nothing. fair, fair, fair. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on, Nelly. Innkeeper's Talent, another wonderful class enchantment, uh, this time from the main set. One in a green, and the first level is, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus and plus and counter on target reach you control. I'm in. Yep. <laughs> yep. For only one more mana, level two says, permanents you control with counters on them have ward one. God, that's annoying. <laughs> Also, your opponent's, like, not going to remember. So, like, this is going to be a big source of, like, yeah, I'll let you take that back. Um, and level three is three and a green for if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. Oh, boy, this card does it all. We've got plus one, plus one counters and the plus one, plus one counter doubler uh, together at last. <laughs> the ward one, I think, is, like, <laughs> That's pretty rare, like the cards that do this. Like, I've been recently playing um, Sultai plus one plus one counters. No, Abzan, sorry, right. I started a Sultai build, but then I went with white instead because obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, Luminar Gasper. Luminar Gasper, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But there are some blue cards there. There are too. some blue cards, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so this card is like a fantastic Luminar Gasperant. They have to use enchant removal on it to kill it. It obviously isn't a body itself, but that's usually not your problem in the plus and plus one counters deck. Like you're playing a lot of creatures. And I don't know how many of the other cards that I've played recently that like made the cut in my Abzan plus and plus counters deck that are like, hey, this makes plus one plus counters and also gives your stuff ward or hexproof. Like that is uh, possibly unique. Certainly all three of these abilities being together on one card um, is unique. And the mana investment for level three is hefty, yeah. but I'm happy with this card <laughs> without ever putting yeah. any extra mana into it. I think this is a slam dunk. All right, so I got a question for the two of you. Great. Luminarch Aspirant is pretty ubiquitous now. It's yeah. an unbelievable very, threat, very especially fun. where it is in the whole curve. This is also a two drop, but not a creature. Mm -hmm. Do you think you're slamming this in like aggressive green decks and mid-range decks like you would Luminarch Aspirant, or is this more limited to the dedicated counter decks because it's also not a creature? Great question, Serge. Mm, I mean... If I'm playing this in another deck outside of counters, it would be something like just mono green Stompy, um, because that's a deck that tends to play ahead of the curve, but also not always on that accelerated curve, right? You're like, all right, I got my, I untap with my mana dork. I don't have a three drop, but I do have a two drop and another one drop. And so like finding extra mana to just get this to level two as after it's already put two one, one counters on a thing is pretty exciting. And then just, you know, the mana sink of, Oh, I just get to dump all these counters onto my big idiots and mono green stompy already. Just you play a bunch of cards with counters on them because right. that's what's good. Yeah. Right. You got your Yorvo, your scavenging ooze, yeah. whatever. But I don't think I'd play this in like gruel, 
monsters or like gruel aggro or whatever. Sure. Yep. Same. I don't. I don't know that I'm putting this in black mold, but I'm definitely putting it in counters decks. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, we have the Keen-Eyed Curator. This is a two mana three three raccoon scout for green green. As long as there are four or more card types amongst cards exiled with the Curator, it gets plus four plus four and has trample. And then for one generic, exile target card from a graveyard. God, the all Watchwolf dot deck is getting so swole. Mm. I mean, at the very least, this is a two mana three three with built in graveyard hate. And the longer the game goes, this just becomes a six mana seven seven with trample that you can invest in over multiple turns. It's so, I mean, the green green is a little bit harder to include and build around, but this suddenly changes the auto include slot that I think Scavenging News had in a lot of decks. It was like this low to the ground two drops that gave an incidental graveyard hate and became a big threat. Like, this is huge. I think this goes into, there was um, Scavenging News, the Lion Sash equipment, and now this as some of the best cost equipped aggressive graveyard hate cards that they've printed leave my graveyard alone <laughs> withered wretch just looking at this card yeah. like man you don't know how we had it back yeah. in the day withered wretch was multi-format all-star yeah. and now this jerk shows up yeah stealing his job so I, pro to this over scavenging news it's not green to exile the card from the graveyard uh-huh. con to this versus scavenging news it doesn't grow incrementally like the ooze does and it doesn't gain you life but this is a like considering what an all star and staple scavenging news has been for what a decade, the fact that this is in the same conversation as it is probably worth realizing how big of a deal this curator is going to be. This stupid little raccoon. I think you're likely playing both. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this. <laughs> if you're going down to one and your deck is three colors, though, it's probably you're cutting scavenging news first. The, the life gain, yeah, I feel like is yeah. super relevant, but the incremental. Um, Pumping, like it's pretty rare you're gonna have a game where this didn't get to seven seven and scavenging use is like an eight eight or something. Like that does you do sometimes get an eight eight scavenging Cap- use. Counterpoint but, though. There are a lot of games, specifically in the three color deck, where you're mana starved for green. Absolutely. You're all and, every time I have excuse, I'm counting my green Right, making, and you're like, how many cards plans, can I exile? Do I have to leave something yeah. open? It, leaving yeah. a colorless open, a generic open oh, yeah. is is way easier but yeah. that's the strength of three color green decks is that typically green is the anchor oh and for so sure. like you have a more green mana than you probably need i don't know I, i've never really you've really never once it. encountered not having enough green with the scavenging news on the battlefield i can't believe i that. mean maybe back in the day <laughs> but like nowadays with their triomes right. and surveil lands and yavi maya i don't know i don't think that is as much of an issue i think These the days, real the real contention between this and scoos is either slots in your deck yep. and whether or not you want life gain on an incremental threat sure or just like uh generic value yeah, on I- a flashy threat and we have this one has that. trample or can get trample. yeah and whether or not you have a synergy too. with plus one plus one counters is maybe right. an evaluation yeah, yeah as well. that's fair too yeah All right. let's move on to wheeler lumra bellow of the woods for green green for a star star legendary creature elemental bear um, elemental write that down <laughs> with vigilance <laughs> reach Power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. And when Lumra ETBs, you mill four cards. Then return all land cards from your graveyard to play <laughs> tapped. <laughs> so there are a couple things that you can do with this card. But where I am most excited is a deck that I have played on one of our Canadian Highlander Friday Night Paper Fights. Uh, that I, uh, Yogmoth's Jacuzzi or Jacuzzi on Commission. Oh, what is the this? like fast bond... Yogmoth's will land storm tinfins kind of deck. You should know I kicked your ass. Yeah, you played this deck against me, and then I forgot what it what you called it or what it was. Yeah. This is like years ago. Yeah, that that this description like that description year, okay. has no like I know yeah. like the name of the deck does not evoke any memories. Okay. I've been so, on your stream when you've mentioned Yogmoth's jacuzzi, not when you were playing it. And I'm like, what is that? What is so, that deck? Okay, yeah. so it's a fast bond, com like fast bond reanimator. Right, deck, basically, okay. yeah. That has a tin fins package. So think Gristlebrand, reanimating Gristlebrand, drawing a bunch of cards, and then sacrificing the Gristlebrand uh, to 
than like a burnt offering or a sacrifice kind of effect. Add a bunch of mana using cards maybe like Children of Corliss or Zurin Orb to help negate the cost of, of life being spent. Um, but importantly, that's a deck that can run and does run Gorio's Vengeance and has like a Legends kind of theme to it. Right. So it's a deck that wants to put a bunch of lands into the graveyard wants to cheat out big legendary cards especially and wants to return all those lands from the graveyard back to play so then they can sacrifice them all to Zurin Orb and squandered resources, right? And so this card fills up your graveyard, casts Sudden Reclamation or mm -hmm. whatever it is to return all the lands back to play. When you sack all your lands to your Zurin Orb or squandered resources, Lumra is going to put itself back into the graveyard due to state-based actions so that you can reanimate it again and bring them all back to add more mana or gain more life or whatever. So you can continue to pop off. So I'm sure there are people that look at this and go like, wow, this bear's huge. And that's it. But I, this is like a very targeted degenerate. This is an engine piece. piece. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I cannot wait to loop this card. Okay, well, I don't remember losing those games, so probably I won't remember the next <laughs> time I lose to this card, but good on you. <laughs> Lumra Doomed Bear. Yeah. <laughs> like this bear is going to go in and out of the graveyard so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Nelly, you're up for the next one. I want to tell you about Mist Breath Elder. One green mana for a 2-2 frog warrior that says, at the beginning of your upkeep, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on Mist Breath Elder. Otherwise, you may return Mist Breath Elder to its owner's hand. So this is like the granddaddy, like, you know, master, best of all time to this single cycle of creatures at uncommon that we had in, I think, Betrayers of Kamigawa. Was it Betrayers or Saviors? Uh, well, the first one was Visions. Oh, stampeding an, wildebeest. Oh, no, stampeding wildebeest. Yeah. That's and then, right. And then, and then saviors. We got five and saviors. We yeah. had like the the blue advisor and the red like demon beast or whatever. All right, all right, boomers. Real black. quick, what is this cycle? If, we, if nobody has any idea just, what you're talking it's about, it's just creatures that say at the beginning of your upkeep, return another creature you control, so or this, return a creature you control. This is, this is an old hand. weird cycle, and the, yeah, kind, was kinda. it the elder or the mist breath? Like, is there any sort of commonality other than that mechanic? They weren't frogs. No, it's just the mechanic specifically. Okay. So, so this sort of like regular gating back of your stuff has been something that designers have played with only a little bit really in magic's history but like skull collector you know was like mm -hmm. several people's little favorite toy get back your ravenous rats or whatever and get to play it every turn so this one i guess it's just been enough time since saviors and the designers went you know no one's broken this well <laughs> it's they, just not broken they made roaring primadox in M13. Oh, yeah. That's a good one to remember, too. Yeah. Four mana. Four mana. And it could do any creature, right? Because the Kamigawa ones were like, you've got to you've got to do a creature of the same of color the same or something. Of the same color. Yeah. Now, what Nelson's trying to get to, sir, okay. is that uh, usually this effect costs four mana. Yeah. Or is very three. specific yeah. on the color. Thank you. Now it costs one. And it's green. And you can return whatever. And also... Uh, you don't have to keep returning this. It's just they they did everything for you. They gave you a two two for one. The the downside has been negated because it's a may. You're allowed to bounce itself just as a bonus because a lot of the other ones said like another or something, yeah. right? Yeah. And and it even grows when you bounce another creature. If you have another creature, you do have to return that creature. Yeah, the may is right. only for bouncing oh, okay, itself, okay, not okay, the other okay, creature. Okay, yeah, okay yeah, yeah. sorry. Thank you for but that. But if you Thank only you. have the elder, you don't have to bounce the elder. Yeah, which um, is how most of them were templated. Yes, beforehand. correct. The other ones, the downside, other than they all cost four, is that they had to, like, the trick was you kill their other creature. Yeah. yeah. And then all they right. got to return their So ne next question. Is this good? Is this something we're excited to have in the format? It's pretty cool in blink decks. I'm, I'm yeah. down to clown. Uh, Seeker Walk. I'm down yeah. to clown with this yeah. in Seeker Walk. Yeah, it's it's another ephemerate for your Seeker Walk. Do yeah. you like this in like initiative deck, maybe? No. I could see no. trying it in, in the in the like John, oh, no, was, Robin was telling not me he's a lot playing of initiative Esper. Decks are playing green yeah. so far. If, yeah. if you're on an initiative plan where you're not just playing the good initiative creatures, and that's like the best thing that you do with your three and four mana, um, and then the rest of your deck is like sort of regular good one for ones, like Mardu initiative or whatever, uh, but you're in a deck that's like trying to turbo out the initiative and ephemerate stuff, and you happen to be also in green in that deck, then I could see an angle for it. 
I just want to return Eternal Witness yep. or Spellseeker or just Wall of Blossoms with this card. Yeah, all right. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. One mana. And it's green. No. You can green sun for this card. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing I wanted to say is just that, like, this effect is now on the most powerful card boasting this effect that we've ever seen. Yes. So, like, so like, how good is it in our format? I'm looking forward to finding out from you and the community. But, yeah, I would try it in Sultai Secret World. This, to begin this with, is, sure. like, the equivalent of waking up and um, looking at, like, Raghavan. Like, you woke up out of a coma... And the one drops you find are Raghavan. And You're the like, last what? one right. drop in red you saw was Jackalpop, Jackalpop. <laughs> and then they gave you Raghavan. Yeah. You're like, what the heck? Yeah. All right, I have a very important question. One, on our episode, where does the card appear when the audience sees it? Do they see it in the center of the screen? Isn't I it? believe between us. Yeah. Okay, so I have a very important meme template for the community being like, is this Raghavan? Wait, wait. <laughs> no, that, that's not where the card that's goes. Not, is it? Where, where? Down, <laughs> card down is, here below us? Or? No, the card is next to Wheeler. Next to Wheeler. All right, so Wheeler. Nope. Bring yeah, yeah, you do the, you gotta do yeah, the butterfly yeah, yeah. pose. Is this Raghavan? Because <laughs> that's the comparison we just made. Well, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> that's like when I was saying Quest for Ula's Temple is like Aether Vile. I didn't mean it was as good as yeah, Aether Vile I, know, I, I meant the effect is kind of a I, same I love how stoked you two are for this because I, I would have completely missed on this card. You have no idea how many, yeah. like, how many of our other creatures uh, that aren't roaring Primadox have been killed or whatever. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like Nelson and I in the pre surge years. God, we were young. And <laughs> we had strong, just like. I don't know. We probably have returned like a wicker bow elder with a stampede. Felt Sarah. so sick. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Get back your enlisted worm. I can remember one of the like harshest Mirrodin drafts I ever lost was to Charles Starling just like playing uh, the crystal rod. Oh, crystal and shard. I, crystal shard. Oh, Sorry, yeah. and I was just like, that's Bounce not that back. big a deal. Yeah, and he's right. just like bouncing his own stuff for value. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. No. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, let's move on. Next up is Overprotect. This is possibly one of the more cracked uh, combat tricks we've seen in the format in a long time. Two mana instant, one in a green. Target creature you control gets <gasps> plus three, plus three, trample, hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. Uh, it slices, it dices, it attack, it protect. <laughs> this thing is going to just blow people out uh, aggressively, defensively, I, I can't think of other words to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, Normally, we don't pay two mana for combat tricks, but this one's like a two for one. Yeah. Well, when we do, it's typically because it provides a lot of stats plus trample. Yeah. Right? yeah. Colossal yeah. mites or whatever. Yeah. I mean, this is a great example. and indestructible. It's yeah. unnecessary. Yeah. So for a while, the only time we got really excited about pump spells were for infect decks. Mm. And then we started getting a little bit more hype for sort of these like three color prowess pump decks. This one might be good enough to even see play in mid-range because something we often talk about is how underutilized combat tricks are in our format. They just don't see play because the card quality is so high. Uh, this one might change that. I mean, people were playing uh, Snakeskin Veil a little bit in some of the dedicated green decks, plus one, plus one, and the and the um, the, the Hexproof to sort of blank stuff as well. A little bit, not a, not a ton of play. I could see this seeing more play because it's... So big. I mean, pump spells are at their best when your opponent doesn't expect them, and being one mana really makes them not expect it because it's just one mana. Holding up two mana can be a little tricky if you're not in the dedicated pump spell deck, but this, and especially because this one gets better with other pump spells, right? You attack, they pass priority, you go to pump, they go to remove it, you say no, mm. and you shut down everything, and instead of the, like, oh, I guess I could have taken five, it's like, oh, I guess I'm taking 12. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wild. Yeah. All right, Wheeler, you're up. Paw Patch Formation. One and a green for an instant. Choose one. Destroy target creature with flying. Destroy target enchantment. Draw a card and create a food token. This has a lot of modes attached to it. Some of them are good. Uh, all of them are kind of like relevant. We get cards like this occasionally and every time they get better and every time I'm like, I mean, yeah, I could kill a Murktide Regent or uh, blow up your Leyline Binding or just cycle and kind of have this weird like renewed faith kind of <laughs> game action. Yep. I think this one is honestly, and we don't like to create whole entirely new cards, but like if this says naturalize, then I'm in. I'm a hundred percent in. 
Uh, or even if it just says destroy target artifact. Destroying enchantments is relevant and is getting more relevant. Urza Saga. Yes, exactly. Blowing up an Urza <laughs> Saga is pretty key. Um, it could blowing up an Underworld Breach is pretty good when they're starting to pop off. Um, but overall, I think it's just about card space. You know, like you don't get to... This card doesn't actually act like roll compression. It just kind of, it's the kind of card you look and you go like, well, it doesn't blow up the artifact. So I would have to add it to my deck instead of like saying like, oh, I don't need to play Crosand Grip anymore. Not a relevant card that people are playing, but you get, you get yeah. what I mean, right? I'm hundred percent playing this in food. I think I like it sure. for food because it also says food on it. <laughs> That's it, yeah. But but I agree that the sort of naturalized broken wings, plummet plus naturalized kind of space. They just keep keep wanting to push that. It seems like from Watsi's side. So it's like we will probably eventually get two mana plummet or naturalize or draw a card like cycling naturalize plummet. This one is so. And then at that point we'll play that it's card. It's right? so close for me. Yeah, I don't think it's close. playable in food. I would play it for the bottom mode only in food. Really? Yeah. Do you have enough of those things? Yeah, like adventures I, and I stuff? I don't think Serge, so. Serge, I think you need to sit down and look at every card that makes food now because it is wild. Like, this, the past three sets have yeah. added 20 cards. Like, you want... Like, we are... Yeah. We're the, maybe we're cooking. We're in the oh we we're done cooking. We're on to dessert. Yeah. I mean this is this is going to maybe touch into some of the other gameplay. But a lot of the recorded games I've played in food lately, I have felt weaker in the removal suite. Oh, and okay. a food creator that is also modal spell that offers the flexibility and removal, I think helps in that slot because I I got a little too deep in the sauce of making food and I missed out on incidental removal that wasn't creature removal. Right. That that kind of hosed me. Specifically, I wasn't playing like a Rex Age effect okay. somewhere in the 100, which I should have been playing. Uh, and I think this lets me shore up that weakness and also still be a little greedy. Yeah, blowing up Blood Moon is not nothing, too. And back to basics. Yeah. Right. The Druids. Yeah. There's plenty of enchantments in our format. The opponent's Sylvan Library. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nelly, you're up. Let's talk about Paw Patch Recruit. For one green mana, you get a 2-1 Rabbit Warrior with Offspring 2 Generic. So you could have three mana and have two Rabbit Warriors. And it has Trample. And whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control other than that creature. So a bit of a complicated templating thing. It's not that confusing, but say you just have one of these and you have a Llanowar Elves. Then when your opponent goes to kill this... You may put a plus one plus one counter on your land or elves. You may not put the plus one custom counter on the thing that is targeted by the spell. Mm -hmm. But often that's not what you want. So it's kind of sweet. I don't know. Um, I could see this in Stompy. Mono green. I'm not sure outside of mono green where we're Do jamming this. It, it's like a token creator. It's three it's, for two it's bodies. A, it's a one drop yeah, with three like black lines mold. attacked. Like, no, I'm not saying this is like, sure. dude, it goes yeah, yeah. everywhere. I'm saying it is this a two is one like, trample for one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, sure. yeah, just play it as a really <laughs> aggressively costed aggro card. And then you just have all this upside just in case. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you have a one drop that is also like relevant on like other points of the game um, that can make multiple bodies that both the bodies have trample that can grow other things. Like I gave crap to that one drop black lizard. Right. But that was also just like, ah, oh, late game, I can make two. And then you're still hitting your land drops, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But this one is just like, yeah, late game, if I make two of these, my opponent is still going to want to not die <laughs> yeah. and try to kill my creatures. No, that's fair. Actually, it's probably fine in plus one plus one counters as well, since okay. it says that and has trample. I'd yeah. give this a try in Gruel Monsters. Actually, like, okay. Just like you have, a, a trample is huge. Them, like, if they're targeting this, they're not targeting your three drops well, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, or I mean, this is your three drop. Imagine right. you're on, like, black-green aggro deck, and you play this on turn two, and you're on, you're the beatdown deck. Any removal spell they play now is a nightmare for them. Mm -hmm. One mana offspring two generic is pretty great next to Skull Clamp, too. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so. what? <laughs> no, you're going to clamp no, the, no. the bun buns? No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Can you bring up the art for the offspring token, James, or is that too much of an ask? Please, I mean, I don't mind looking at this. Well, if you works. do that, then I'm definitely not going to be able to skull clamp it later. I need <laughs> I just to have, like... You, I just wanted you to look at no, what you want to I need to have clamp. ripped in half backwards draft traps nope, for my offspring nope, tokens. Nope, nope, Hey, sir, sure, what's the next card? All right, all right. What's the next card? Next up, we got... Oh, oh. You would, you would clamp that, it eh? It looks like you could handle a clamp. Fun yeah. fact, the original art for this card, uh, it does not have a green cape. It has a red cape, not unlike the uh, adult one. Really? Neat. Yeah. 
Why do they change that, do you think? I don't know. Okay. But it's very cute. Uh, okay. It's very cute. Yeah. Next up, <laughs> we have the Scrap Shooter. This is a three mana, four, four raccoon archer for one green, green, and has gift a card. So when you cast this spell, you may, pro you may promise your opponent a gift. Um, when it enters, they get to draw a card. It has reach. And if a gift was promised, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. So at the very least, you get a three mana four forward with keyword ability. And if you're in a situation where you really need your opponent's enchantment artifact to die, you can trade it for whatever they want with a, um, you can give them another card to deal with what's in play. Now, the tricky thing is, I believe you cannot green sun for this and still naturalize their stuff. Correct. Oh, so, that's a really important point. So that is a huge difference for three drops in your deck and your toolkit compared to something like Reclamation Sage or Knight of Autumn or the things you normally get to. You cannot tutor for an answer with this. This is cast only, but it's a three mana four four. So maybe that's okay, but it it is not as flexible as the three drop disenchant style creatures normally are in the green deck. It's also harder to cast. You know, Rex Sage is two and white. Um, Loran is two in a, pardon me, uh, Rexage is two in a green, Loran is two in a white, Knight of Autumn is, I mean, it also has two colored pips and stuff like that. So a little bit more flexibility, more of an aggressive body if you're like a very proactive, like green beatdown strategy, but I, that's a pretty major downside uh, in, in my opinion. Anything else to add to that particular one? Yeah, I guess including this in your deck is exciting because it does all of these things um, and just maybe makes your choice to grab your Eladamry's Call instead of your Green Sun Zenith maybe sure. or something more. Like if you're not already on Eladamry's, like this this prefers you get to cast it. Um, but yeah, still a really solid include. Yeah. Wheeler. Tender Wild Guide. One and a green for a 2-2 two -two Possum Druid with Offspring for two generic. Tap, add one mana of any color. Tap, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. Kind of an interesting little ditty here. Um, a 2 mana, 2-2 two, two mana dork that fixes for any color is not nothing. Um, you know, it, it still has some vulnerability compared to stuff like Sylvan Caryatid or Paradise Druid that come with that added protection. But this one can grow. Uh, if you're not using the mana or if you're not attacking with it. And the offspring is pretty neat, right? Being able to have a single card that can generate multiple bodies and then both those bodies get bigger. I'm not super sold on this. This is kind of a weird spot where, like, I wish it had a more defensive stat line, like a 1-3 or something like that, because pushing it up to for toughness would be a big selling point of like, they need to bolt this now. Cause if they don't, as soon as you untap, they're not being going to be able to bolt it anymore. Um, I'm just trying to find a spot of where to include this. Like there are some other more aggressive two drop mana dorks. In fact, one of them that we're going to talk about when we get to gold. Um, but I'm hard pressed to want to play this over something like uh biophagus from the Warhammer 40 K. Uh, set that like just makes your other creatures permanently bigger, which is kind of what you want to be doing. It's yeah, it's it's tough. There's a everything about this card is good, but I'm hard pressed to find like a spot where I want to play this card. It's very it's a very confused magic card. There's a there's a bunch of cool two mana mana accelerants from this set, and we're just in a hard world to, you know, Canadian Highlander is a tough place for your mana accelerants to cost two mana. I haven't played Crater Hoof, um, or sorry, Cradle Hoof in a long time. And I've, I feel like the current format is pretty harsh for that deck since the printing of Fury, basically. Um, and Bowmasters. And Bowmasters. Yeah, exactly. It's been, it's been a tough world out there to be like a dedicated mana dorks into Crater Hoof being with deck. But this card does, if you are playing that strategy or if that strategy gets balanced out by something at some point um, and, and becomes popular again, this is both, two mana mana dork and four mana two mana dorks which is like relevant on your your stretch up to six or eight which is like you know actually casting greater hoof is a thing that deck does or really often tutoring for or casting primeval titan it is worth noting that that deck 
four mana is always awkward. Yeah, you, you never don't really know what yeah. to do with four. Four is so awkward in that deck because like you have some fives that matter and mm. sixes obviously, but sometimes you have four mana and you're like, well, I guess I'll cast one more one one for one. It's and like, then say go. It's like <laughs> natural order, Garrick Wild Speaker, and then like Green Sun for three or Finale yeah. for two. Yeah, like it's very. It, it's either this would the, be one of the best things you can do in that deck for four mana. Yeah, which is wild. Yeah, that, right. that is a. a point towards i have an interesting question and this is going to talk about a deck that we don't really care that much about anymore which breaks my heart to say blue green Sorensen. there was an all-star in that deck and i cannot remember the name of it it's the two mana one one that taps for green but it also has threshold and becomes a three three where bear where bear and i'm looking at this hmm. and i'm like if Sorensen was still good is this is this a better where bear I think that it's a two mana mana. It's a two mana mana dork, but it has the ability to grow and sort of take over the game and in this sort of like combination beat down and mana fixing pattern. I don't know. I think the reason for Werebear's inclusion in original Sorensen is that it was a 4-4 that had some other words on it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not so much that it was a mana dork, it's that it was a 4-4 for two. Sure. So it's like you play the game, and like every now and then you're like, early Werebear, and now I'm on five mana before you. That's cool. But like... Usually it was just like land drops, one for one ing, and end of turn draw cards with a blue card, and then eventually play two drop. I'm gonna kill you with this eventually. I have four mana up still, mm -hmm. or whatever. And like this is this is no wear bears that you're trying to tell me. Yeah, it's just this <laughs> well, is a different card. It, yeah. It's very different. And I agree. so is wear like wear bears also just been replaced. Like if blue green sword doesn't comes back as an archetype, I don't think it's gonna play wear bear. Oh those man, skills. I'm heartbroken. But I I also don't mind trying this out in plus one plus one counters because like that deck's pretty mana hungry. It's also yeah, it's typically a three color deck, two or three color deck. So yeah, so I, I, I this card is probably not good enough for most strategies, but. It's adorable, and mm. I don't know. I like I like the idea behind it. There's also some contention between, like, you want to get this ticking up as soon as possible, but also you probably want to, like, the turn after you play this, hit four mana. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah it's got a few different modes, right? It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's always so hard to tell which is the right way to play I this. I certainly love this late late game way more than Paradise Druid in sure. every scenario except I need a chump. I don't know. <laughs> I'm surprised neither of you monsters have said, ooh, we offspring it and then we, we can, can skull clamp. clamp. Baby. No. You, this I one mean, hates skull clamp. First, it's just going to put plus and plus and cameras on The first itself. person who's going to clamp an offspring on camera is going to be Wheeler. Like, he talks a big game right now, but you know I it's going to be will Wheeler. not clamp a rabbit. So help me God. Oh, but you would have possum? I see how it goes. Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> Am I supposed to just bring, like... Oh, look yeah. at that little guy. Oh, look at that big head, perfectly sized <laughs> to draw me two cards. Am I supposed to just bring, like, Bloomboro Creatures exclusive aristocrats to a, oh. a showdown just to try to tilt? Yeah. Oh, no. I love it. fuzzy little guys. <laughs> All right. Last green card, Nelly. It's Thorn Vault Forager. One and a green for a 2-2 Squirrel Ranger with, hey, tap, add a green mana. Or tap and forage, add two mana in any combination of colors. Or Three and a green and tap, so four mana and tap this. Search your library for a squirrel card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So again, yeah, I mentioned, and we didn't even cover them all, but the set has a lot of two mana mana dorks. This one can add two mana. So those are usually pretty important. We hold those in extremely high uh, regard. Um, this is not a devoted druid, but yeah, as long as you hit... All of your fetch lands, or you're the food deck, five mana on turn three, right? Yeah. So, you know, if you want to include this card with the plan to do that, my hat's off to you. I think probably food, you should give this a go. Yes. There's also actually two extremely live squirrel tutor targets Hell for this yeah, as well. Yeah. There's Chatterfang at three, which just ends games. And then there's a new green black squirrel from this set. That I can't remember the name off the top of my and, head. And two black squirrels. Yes. And the two and the two squirrels. mono black squirrels at yeah. four as well. So one of those is hits. a rat. Oh, okay. Oh right, one the is a rat. One is a, a squirrel. Rat. So there's oh, right. three targets. Yeah. Okay. But the Hazel's Brewmaster or whatever, the the, the three four menace cook. That's yes. The the, yeah. the cook one's is a squirrel. Yeah. One's a rat. Yeah. yeah. But also like the the Eternal Witness we talked about, like the fact oh, that yeah, you can tutor up a you know an Eternal Witness is pretty good. Yeah, that's maybe relevant just for for this card. Yeah. I will say like. I think Forage for add two mana, like Forage is on a bunch of different cards. Yeah. And the later into the game it is, the easier it's going to be to to activate Forage or to Forage. Mm -hmm. um, forage on your mana dork for turn three is a big ask. 
but maybe it'll help you double spell. It's like if you're on. I was going to say yeah. magic players, and we are also guilty of this, tend to look at this as like, okay, if I can tap this after playing it on turn two, I have five mana to play a five drop. And right. it's like, and then I need to, you know, fetch three times. Yeah. But like a play pattern of fetch once and like hand attack you, kill your thing, three drop three. Yeah. Like it just That's lets fine. you do things that you are not able to do normally. And like with a variety of colors, which is kind of wild. Now, if I may. Due to scheduling reasons, Nelly has to leave after green. So a little bit of a break for tradition. We're going to give a quick second to Nelly to give some closing thoughts, uh, his clothing, closing thoughts on the set. And then uh, Wheeler and I will continue with the gold after this. My clothing so thoughts on the set. <laughs> I think that every single little animal oh, is dressed perfectly. All right. They're all adorable. Why are they wearing pants? I'm so... No, <laughs> go ahead. Get some pants for those kids. Yeah. Honestly, the fact that there's all these good... And you're going to talk about another one. Probably my favorite one in the gold section coming up. But there's a lot of two-mana mana dorks is making me think about like where Canadian Highlander is right now in terms of mana accelerants. Moxner are extremely powerful. But like, how bad is it to have, you know... Uh, play on two or for two of your mana that's hoping to ramp you more or just get you to cast more spells on turns like three four five um so i don't know i'm i'm curious about a bunch of those the the two mana mana dorks are a big part of my thoughts in this set i'm also looking forward to playing dark star auger um in some kind of medium or large black deck probably i don't know if it goes into the fast one but overall this this set is a bit of a like system shock from mh3 <laughs> you know we had to do four episodes, right? Yeah. Um, so there's there's quite a lot less that's going to rock the boat here. But for a few of the decks, like I want to say, especially food um, and like, is it Blitz? I think I need to look at um, and Mono Red. Those all kind of got some fun tools. Um, but overall, not a like terribly enormous set for Canadian Highlander. And that's okay. That's not a dig. Um, I think the, the art is beautiful and the... I'm glad. I'm glad for the vibe. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So catch these two's clothing, clothing, clothing thoughts. Clo closing <laughs> clothing remarks on Bloomboro. My man, thank and you very much. Thank you for having me. Bye, bud. All right. Let's start off with the gold cards. First up, we have the Burrow Guard Mentor. This is a two mana star star rabbit soldier for a green and a white. It has trample and power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures that you control. This is something we've seen a lot in Magic, um, going back, God, even as far as like original Ravnica set, we used to have to pay three mana for this effect, like one green green, even further back than that. Yeah, uh, Alpha. Alpha! Yeah, uh, Keldon Warlord is what we call this card. Oh my God. But that card was four mana. Yeah, this is two and it has Trample, which is pretty spicy. I I am low on these effects personally. I know that there are... Um, a lot of go-wide strategies. There's a lot of token strategies. I don't know if this is the sort of effect that those decks want. They might more care about anthems and making more creatures, but this is very aggressively costed. It's a soldier, which is an upside, and it has trample. So this is a pretty good one if you want one. I played in Greedway and Idiots. Mm -hmm. It is like in a deck with dedicated creature strategy, like a dedicated creature strategy with protection spells or just like an abundance of, well, watch wolves sort of cards. Um this is more often than not going to be like a two mana three three. Yeah. And if you'll recall our match where I played that deck against, I think you were on food, like finding ways to push damage and sure. get and to scale into the late game yeah. is something that deck can struggle with. And this would have been like a great wall breaker in that kind of scenario. I guess you often look at this and you have this dream of being like, it's going to be an eleven eleven, way way way. And if you have a two mana three three or two mana four four, you're laughing, right? Yeah. Oh, Even two mana two two trample is like you know you don't play that card in your deck, but you kind of just accept that sometimes it will just be a two mana two two with trample, and that's fine. It's that's yeah. still just a threat. All right, you're up, uh, Camellia, the seed miser. This is what I'm talking about. One black and a green for a three three legendary squirrel warlock with menace. Other squirrels you control have menace. Whenever you sacrifice one or more foods, create a one one green squirrel token and two generic forage. Put a 1-1 counter on each other squirrel you control. 
So we are far from having squirrels be a deck in Canadian Highlander, <laughs> but the food, unless. unless but the food deck does have a lot of incidental squirrels, yep. or can make a conscious decision to include uh, some additional squirrels, like the the curious forager that we were talking about. You know that card's inclusion may be based off whether or not you want to have the squirrel mana dork or the the mana dork that forges that can tutor a squirrel and, and whatever. Um, the play pattern of this of pay to sack a food, you immediately make the squirrel and then it gets a plus one plus one counter on it like the way that the stack is going to work um, if you use Camellia to make the squirrels. But it's just, it depends on how you sack the food tokens. You can, like you were talking about with the the class enchantment. Yeah, Gorman's talent. Yeah, it's just, you'll find other ways to yeah. sacrifice food. And while it says one or more, there are a lot of food cards that just say, sack a food, do a thing. And so the squirrels are going to ramp up very quickly. Uh, the downside is that it's a legendary three drop, which is already just what that deck has. Like that deck has so many legendary threes that you don't know what to do with yourself. Uh, but this one is quite good. I think I don't. Um, I was going to say I think this is an upgrade over Greta, but I don't know if it is or not. I kind of want to play both. Yeah, I, I just, mean that's the problem. <laughs> like, but then what? What do you cut? But well, one of the ways that you can play into Caracas is that you overwhelm. Sure. Yeah. And because <laughs> this deck generates so much mana, you can yeah. get to a point where. You know, they only have one Caracas per turn. They got to make up their mind. Or because you already have acceleration, you can always change your points to include like strip and demonic tutor um, and be like mox mox strip demonic and crop rotations free. Yeah. And just say, if you get the Caracas, uh, I'm going to find the answer. I'm going to kill it. Yeah. Yes. As yeah. quickly as possible. I'm yeah. so excited to brew more food. I know it's all I've done for content lately. <laughs> but I, I haven't played it like a commander version of it mm -hmm. lately, but uh, it's I'm just so hype for it right it's now. pretty good. Just let me cook. See what I did there, food joke. Uh-huh. Thank you. Next up, <laughs> Phineas, comma, Ace Archer. Two mana, two, two legendary rabbit archer for a green and a white. It has vigilance and reach. Whenever it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control that is a token or a rabbit. Then, if creatures you control have total power 10 or greater, draw a card. Right off the bat, this is a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two with Vigilance and Reach. That's a lot of upside. Downside, it's a legend. We've talked about Krakus. It's one card. You just have to be aware that that is a downside. Um, on go-wide strategies that are already making a lot of tokens, this card is absolutely cracked. And this set has made a bunch of good cards that are also just incidentally rabbits. So from the previous episode, we had Jacked Rabbit, for example, that is pumping out a bunch of 1-1 one -one tokens that also are all rabbits. But either way, it works and it synergizes with Phineas here. And so if you're a green-white tokens strategy, you're going to love this card. Um, otherwise, I think it's a it's a little narrow. It's you, I don't think this is like mid-range playable. But Yeah, the fact that the two keywords are defensive... Yeah, is not great. That's not really what you're looking for, and it never actually puts counters on itself, so it's a little fragile in combat. Yeah, and it has to attack as opposed to seeing an attack, right? Yeah, but that upside, like when this card starts cooking, it will take over a game. Right. You just need to start doing that. Uh, Fire Glass Mentor, a two one for a black and a red. It is a Lizard Warlock that says, at the beginning of your second main phase, if an opponent lost life this turn, you exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them. Until the end of turn, you may play that card. So this is a card that had a lot of hype going into the set uh, surrounding this, in that, well, it's a two-mana card that can draw you additional cards. You're thinking of it like, oh, look, it's Aggro Bob or whatever. Right. Yeah. The problem is we got Aggro Bob in <laughs> yeah, the form the, the, of the three meta bird, Caustic right? Bronco yeah. oh. or the bird yeah. or just Bob because you're a black deck or a black X deck that is bound to play cheap spells to, you know, really take advantage of your Bob. Um, and while it's not the hardest thing in the world to get this going, it's still not as default as Dark Confidant. No. Um, it is still not guaranteed and this body is just so vulnerable. Um, so I'm, I'm not super keen on this card. There's another card that is coming up that is somewhat similar to this. 
uh, kind of effect of, hey, my opponent has lost life, I get to do a thing, that I'm a little more interested in for like a Rakdos mid-range deck, uh, but I don't think this is going to be one of them. I want to get ahead of the comment of, but this is Bob with no downside. And the the way to answer that is, uh, Wheeler and I are both judges. I mean, Nelson is also a judge. If you're at a tournament and you miss your, your Dark Confidant and you miss your Bob trigger, it is treated as a beneficial trigger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Like, it is it is ultimately upside. Sure, you lose some life. We've all died to our Dark Confidant, but it's not really a downside. And Bob always does his thing. Yes. Like, there is so much... This is like uh, this happens a lot when you get people being like, how come you didn't talk about this card? Yeah. Or this card? And they say, it does this. It's like, well, no. It does this sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very big difference. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Gev. Scaled Scorch. This is a two mana three two lizard mercenary. This one is legendary, but it also costs black red. It has ward, pay two life, and other creatures you control enter with an additional plus one plus one counter on them for each opponent who lost life this turn. Whenever you cast a lizard spell, Gev deals one damage to target opponent. So, I mean, is this the card you were referencing before with the Fireglass Mentor? This no, but I thought it was very funny that. There was another lizard with this exact right, mana like the cost. same yeah same mana cost except this is a three two it has ward which actually triggers the ability if they try and deal with it the creatures coming afterwards mm -hmm. and yeah the, the the thing that's slightly weird about this and there's a couple of cards in Bloomboro that also further mimic this is it it, it it's really trying to define when it wants players to cast their spells. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the... I don't know if we have a single expand card that we talked about. Expand card. We we had one earlier. Did we have We're one? Probably, there's a couple in gold. Yeah. Expend seems to want to incentivize the player to cast their spells pre-combat mm -hmm. to get value in case things get removed. And now this is like, well, no, you're going to want to cast your creatures post-combat after mm -hmm. damage has happened if you don't have a burn spell or something like that. So it's 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 interesting. But all right, to evaluate this card as written, uh, this is a very aggressively costed card. It's great. It's a 3-2 two for 2. Awesome. It defends itself with ward. Its ward ability also triggers its make your creatures bigger. And uh, on the offhand side, on the offhand chance, off chance yeah. that you cast a lizard, you also get to ping the opponent, which is uh, kind of sweet. And the way those triggers work, if you cast a lizard, it does enter with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So... I don't know if you're like an aggressive black moon beatdown deck. Yeah, like Jund, Jund, like aggro slash Jund Blitz is something that occasionally pops up here and there. Uh, you could just be like a Rakdos aggressive -y kind of mid range deck. Basically, there like Rakdos. A, there's like a black drop. moon deck, wasn't there? Is that still people still brewing black moon or no? No, no? Not okay. really. That's too bad. But yeah, I don't know. Just play this <laughs> card with like Inti and Raghavan and Lelia and yeah. other broken cards and that. Yeah. And you'll probably win some games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Glarb Calam uh, Calamity's Augur. Black, green, and a blue for a 2-4 legendary frog wizard noble with death touch. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may play land cards and cast spells with mana value four or greater from the top of your library, and you can tap it to surveil two. This lets you play lands from the top of your library. Yep. Uh, this has a very threatening stat line. Just, it is, like, impossible to attack into. Manages to dodge Lightning Bolt, obviously can't dodge Caracas, uh, but is very annoying to try and overwhelm on the board, uh, while also just, it's difficult to block. And it's really annoying if you have to double block to get it off the board because you're just trading with other things. Uh, the Surveil is a powerful ability as well. Uh, I don't know how many spells you're casting off the top of your library, but you know the fact that you can cast um, X spells that you pump above four, you know, your Green Sun Zenith and your Finale of Devastation, Force of Will, obviously, uh, some of the pitch elementals, Although not the good pitch elementals Wait, in this one. I thought those specifically said you could only cast them from hand for the alternate cost. For evoke? I thought, yeah, I thought I think you're conflating evoke with overload. I might be I might be thinking of those. I do remember weird interactions of like uh future sight and some of those alternative costs. No, evoke is just an is alt it? cost. Yeah. Well, Okay, so if you asked me yeah. if this was a written test, yeah. I would have 100%. I'm just pulling up Muldrifter. 
just to look at Mold Drifter. But like, I'm also, I mean, also because of the mana value five regretted, you couldn't force off the top anyways because it's five. Yeah, evoke is just you can cast it for the evoke cost. You can cast it, not. not you may play mana with mana value four or greater. From four or greater. So you got to go up. You got to go up. Mm -hmm. This doesn't let you. The, Sorry. the limitation on this okay. is that you can't churn just, through your deck. I just assumed it was four or less. Lands or four or greater. Yeah. So big things and uh, lands. I'm a little conflicted. The fact that there are so many, again, three drops in the lands mid-range decks yeah. make this a little awkward. Um, this card might just cut some of the other ones. I Augur of Autumn has been kind of awkward. Interesting. And like, again, we talked about Caracas, but if you're a lands deck, you definitely have answers Yeah, you don't care. It's also interesting how th this mana cost in particular, like Leovold has been seeing a resurgence of play lately, mm -hmm. just to deal with a bunch of stuff. Uh, Leovold and um, what's the colorless green blue one? The two, three that draws cards. Colorless green blue? Yeah. Two, three that draws? It's like whenever a creature deals combat damage to an opponent, you draw a card. Oh, Edric? Edric. I've been seeing Leovold and Edric in deck lists lately. And it's oh, funny to see Glarb because that's ex exactly where my mind goes is those like bug mid range control. Like the the Jace special, right? Yeah, bug mid range, whether it be the lands variant or yeah. just like a natural order Atroxa deck, is kind of in a transitional period where it's like, oh, just because we're a blue deck doesn't mean we have to play all these blue, like capital B blue cards. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'd I'd be willing to give this card a shot. They, there's just so many words on this card. Yeah. And it's cheap. Yep. I think that's good enough for I had me. such a weird opposite read for that that third bullet point. I thought it was less. I you wanted why. to get degenerate. I mean, I also thought it was kind of restrictive, but I was like, in our format, our, our format's so cheap and so fast that you, right. know, you have a lot of hits, but it turns out it's the opposite. That's fine. All right, next up, we have Hugs, the Grizzly Guardian. <laughs> X, red, red, green, green, gets you a legendary Badger Warrior 5-5 five, five with Trample. When it enters, exile the top X cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards, and you may play an additional land on each of your turns. So, this is a 4-mana 5-5 five, five with Trample for a very prohibitive mana cost of red, red, green, green, but, like, a Gruul monster style, you know, deck is pretty happy to cast this. And if you just happen to be a big mana deck, if you got a little bit of extra floating around right now. You can generate a little bit of card advantage with that X ability. And one of the nice things, I mean, this is nice, not necessarily from an advantage point of view, but from just the way I like to play the game, I never like to exile a bunch of lands and not get to play them. But <laughs> mm -hmm. getting to play additional lands on each turn, you know, seems kind of sweet. And I do have to give a shout out in particular. I remember years ago, uh, Jeremy White made a beautiful um, green red turbo land deck. Just, yes. just, just green red, which is a combination that I tend to typically sleep on. But it had um, the red, red, red enchantment, oh, seismic, seismic assault, seismic assault lands. Yeah. I could see this being played in that deck as well. I mean, unfortunately, when you exile the lands, you can't pitch them to seismic assault. Yeah, but you still get to play them. Yeah, which is kind of spicy. I, I do like this in a in a lands combo deck, or like mm. a you know, you could be red green, you could be jund, whatever, because when you generate infinite mana, sometimes you don't have a way to just end the game sure and this lets you just draw your deck yep um lets you and you can like play it out uh early on for the additional lands and then when you get infinite mana if you have like a caracas bounce, bounce it back, to your, back own hand. to your own yeah. hand and then cast it and pop off yeah also yeah four mana five five trample yeah like, it's tricky to cast but again uh, the infamous Cruel Claw. This was the other record. Ah, the to. Voxy Special. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, one black and a red for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature, Weasel Mercenary, with Menace. And whenever Voxy deals combat damage to a player, <laughs> exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. You may cast that card by discarding a card rather than paying its mana cost. So this card, I drew a comparison to the Fireglass Mentor uh, and another card actually from Innistrad Crimson Vow, maybe Midnight Hunt, called Florian, which is the same mana cost, 
the same body. I think it has first strike as it's like, you do not want to block me mechanic. Thank you. Yeah. So three mana, three, three in Rakdos first strike beginning of your pre -com or post combat main phase. You look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life your opponent's lost this turn, and you exile one of those cards and put the rest on the bottom, and you can play the exiled card. So basically, these Rakdos threats that are really tough to block, that when you hit them, or when you go to your post-combat main phase, in this case, Florian doesn't even have to attack. Sure. Um, but, you know, First Strike makes it more appealing to attack. You get some kind of card advantage, but it's often not permanent card advantage it's it's like the until end of turn you yeah. gotta use this yeah. or whatever and we have a lot of that and that's kind of scary the fact that Rakdos now has an identity yes. of creating yeah. card flow yeah. and just having these like really annoying creatures that like Menace you have to double block it but if you're double blocking against a Rakdos deck with open mana you are getting blown out and then just hitting someone and being able to cash in additional lands. Or one of the issues with Rakdos is that they occasionally um, will find themselves with a bunch of removal and no, not enough creatures to target it, right? And you're just like, okay, I have three kill spells in hand and my opponent does not play creatures. What do I do? And this lets you turn them into potentially other threats or other pieces of disruption. Uh, I know that people look at this card and they go like, oh, cast Emrakul. And that's kind of cool. But you know what's also cool? Just casting Duress. Yeah. Just casting Thoughtseize, casting a Dragon's Rage Channeler, casting a Mox. <laughs> like, whatever. It's, uh, yeah, I, I like this card. There there are some inherent weaknesses that we don't we don't need to talk about Bolt and Caracas for every card, but we still will. Um, but yeah, there's a home for this kind of card. It fits in that theme and can really help press the advantage that... Uh, makes that deck so powerful. <clears throat> All right, next up, we have Mabel, Heir to Cragflame. Oh, this is a surge card through and through. Three mana, three, three, legendary mouse soldier for one, a red and a white. Other mice you control get plus one, plus one. When Mabel enters, create Cragflame, a legendary colorless equipment artifact token with equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, has vigilance, trample, and haste, and equip for two. So, you might not know this, but I like to play Boros equipment decks, huh? and this is a this is a creature that comes with its own artifact, which is pretty cool. Uh, it does cost five to cast and equip in the same turn, but if you're playing stuff like Pure Steel Paladin, for example, there's a lot of ways to get around the equip cost. It's not the greatest threat. You typically are looking for uh, creatures that are. Uh, that include keywords that are like benefit attacking, but the equipment that it makes gives you most of those words that you're looking for, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like a this is a terrible comparison, but it's kind of like its own Stoneforge Mystic, right? It's a creature and it gets you an equipment. And um, anytime you cast one card and you get multiple game objects, you are kind of ahead, and that is what this is making for you. So I'm going to play it in exactly that deck <laughs> and probably nowhere else but i've got a copy and i'm ready to brew with this it. is why i like the equipment deck that plays the grindier game is mm. because you play this and make the equipment and then if they kill this it's just that equipment gets passed on to another creature yep. that hopefully finds another piece oh. and then so forth and so forth mm. cool cool mouse dude cool mouse pond profit Two hybrid blue-green for a 1-1 one, one Frog Advisor. When Pawn Prophet enters, draw a card. It's not often we talk about commons. We are all so hype on this card. It, it draws, it's in blue-green, it yeah. draws a card. Uh, it's wild. Yeah. It doesn't have the, like, it's not Ice Fang Codal, no nope. friends. It's not Wall of Blossoms. Nope. But it can attack. I'm just excited that, I mean, obviously, blue is not a color that suffers from card draw, mm -hmm. but blue has an Elvish Visionary again, or another one. Yeah, it's nice. I was playing a Esper initiative list, like, pretty early on into um, North 100 filming, and I borrowed a tournament-winning list from Robin Sorensen, and he was playing from, I want to say, one of the Modern Horizons 3, Watcher of Tomorrow. It's like a 1-1 that enters tapped with Hideaway, 
And his, his thought being like, look, the deck just needs more two drops with powerful ETBs. You don't mind flickering. You don't mind bringing back to your hand. And this is an immediate upgrade for that card. Yeah, you need. There are spots when you are playing initiative dot deck that your opponent will take the initiative. Yep. And playing a wall of omens in that kind of deck is a little awkward. And so being able to smack in is pretty important. Same with like seeker walk decks too, right? Like you may uh, find spots where you need to like do enough chip damage so that your opponent has to worry about your board before they worry about getting combo killed. Like Kiki Pod was the same way. Hmm. I imagine we're going to see a lot of Pawn Profit yeah. in, in these creature-based decks or ETB-based decks. You know what just made me very sad? It it probably spells the end to my boy, uh, Coiling Oracle. Uh, I mean, why not both? Redundancy. I guess, yeah, no, I, I can't. I can't quit you, Coiling Oracle. <laughs> All right, let's talk about one of the Planeswalkers. The Planeswalker? The Planeswalker. Let's talk about the Planeswalker, Ral Crackling Wit. This is a four mana, four loyalty, otter fursona of Ral. Uh -huh. For two, a blue, and a red. Static ability. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a loyalty counter on Ral. The plus one ability is to create a 1-1 one, one blue and red otter creature token with prowess. These things will kill people. They're very strong. Minus three, draw three cards, then discard two cards. And minus 10, draw three, you get an emblem with instant and sorcery spells you cast have Storm. So this is a honestly a pretty powerful Planeswalker, and it does what a Planeswalker wants you to do. It wants to have an ability that defends itself, ideally on the plus, which it does with the plus one plus one, and it wants to generate some form of advantage with the card draw. That being said, it is four mana. And in our format, there are a lot of more powerful Planeswalkers than this one. Uh, looking at you, Minskin Boo and Comet. Uh. I still think it's good. I don't think I would... I don't think I'd judge somebody if they resolve this against me. I don't know how excited I am to play it, specifically in, in these colors. I've kind of come around on this card, but I'm in the same spot where it's a little awkward to find a home for it. Um I know most Planeswalkers fit this description, but this card is, like, cracked when you have Force or any, like, free spell, yep. right? Like, yep. this card plus Pyrokinesis kind of just locks up the game. When you play it, you're typically just playing it immediately making a token. So five loyalty plus a chump blocker uh, is a lot to get through. And if you untap, you can, like, pop off. Yes. It is unfortunate that this only has two loyalty abilities, and it just has a plus and the ultimate. <laughs> I mean, that's... The the draw three, discard two, like, may come up, but I, I got to imagine the play pattern with this card is, like, otter, play otter, it, otter, otter, otter. make <laughs> a ton of otters, and just, yeah. like, cantrip and keep it alive, and then ultimate, which is the play pattern for a lot of playing sure. drawers, but... This one especially, because I had it a, just keeps ticking up. I had a very brief time of returning to Standard when, um, I think it was called Thousand Hour Storm. Thousand Year Storm. Thousand Year Storm was in Standard, and I do have some dreams of looking at that ultimate and trying to do, you know, Storm without Storm is, is kind of fun. Yeah, don't judge a Planeswalker by its ultimate, but, like, you could end the turn after you have cast, like casting this and then ending your next turn, this card could have like eight loyalty. Yep. Like it is, it is very real for this card to ultimate pretty quickly. Oh, that static ability is unreal. Yeah. I, I was actually discussing this card with uh Canadian Highlander counselor, Evan Pepper, uh, mm. about playing this in Palcatraz, the, really? uh, like the planeswalker control kind of stack C sort of mm. deck. Cause that's, I mean, with Moxin, it's non-creature, not instant or sorcery. Sure. So Moxin, yep. Bobbles, cheap Rocks, trinkets, yeah, whatever, yeah. like you can get this up there very quickly. So it might actually be like a secret, uh, like throw it in a Tolarian Academy control mid range card too, huh. which is not what you would associate a blue red. No. Well, not what you would associate a Ral with. And that deck just wants to stay alive and yeah. keep its tokens alive. Yeah, and then also, I mean, speaking of tokens, in the, um, oh my god, 2-1 makes 1-1s one every time you cast an uh, instant resource. Oh, Pyromancers. Yeah, in like a Pyromancer deck, I think that's that's probably the the more expected home for this deck because of non-creature matters cares. Right? It is not embarrassing to cast this card in Blue Moon. No, no. Yeah, yeah. which it says a lot. Get your Is It Drakes or whatever. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, coming up next, we have Storm Catch Mentor. Yeah. A blue and a red for a 1 1 Otter Wizard with haste and prowess and instants and sorceries you cast cost one less to cast. Um, this is a Goblin Electromancer variant that also just gets bigger as you start casting a whole bunch of spells. It is a little awkward because typically decks that have prowess threats and want a bunch of prowess threats take advantage of the fact that their cards all cost one mana in the first place. But you are going to play, you know, two mana counter spells, a chart, of course, maybe you're on like a searing spear kind of like burn spell variant um, that you can take advantage of this. It doesn't have the defensive stat line of something like Baral, which occasionally Blue Moon will play a Baral style of effect. Um, but it just, this is uh, actually the fifth version of this effect. Interesting. We have Baral, Electromancer, Baby Ral, uh, the Otter, and then Thunderclap Drake from OTJ Commander. Hmm. And so I actually think there may be room for like a storm deck that wants to play a bunch of these cards uh. and then pop off. There was a version, I called it Big Gay Electric Prince Moonstorm, which was like a blue, red, past in flames storm deck that used time walks as well. And you sure. basically just like cast a bunch of time walks. All your five minute time walks are suddenly very affordable, right? They're so damn cheap now. And that deck also, <laughs> like uh, the way that it survived was by playing moons. And you now have an additional moon in the yep. form of Harbinger of the Seas. So like a bunch of new cards have been printed exactly for that deck. And it's got its points reduced in the form of time walk going to six points, mystical going to one. <laughs> so I think there's some room for that in there. But it's not as like ubiquitous, uh, like blue red, kind of like tempo-y card. I think like Storm Storm Chase Mentor or Storm Chaser Mage or whatever the hell it was called from Oath of the Gate Watch, really just shows that two mana for one power on prowess is not enough. Interesting, because I I was actually kind of excited to try and give that a go. Like this, is it Blitz? Because in mono red we also have the two mana two one haste Mentor, uh, and also it has Valiant. I can't remember that card it was called. Like, yeah, there's like a certain density of this, and you're just you're two two power is huge. That's for the that big guy. difference, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. like you need to cast a spell to make this a relevant body. Fair. The other ones you just cast a spell to make it bigger than your opponent's stuff. All right. Next up, we have the Vine Reap Mentor. This is a two mana three two squirrel druid for a black and a green. When it enters or dies, create a food token. I love this for the food deck, which yep. doesn't which isn't going to surprise anybody, specifically because it's non-legendary. Yeah, and it is. I mean, there, there's a lot of the um, the worse food cards. You have to attack something has to something else has to eat to be to make a food. Mm -hmm. There's like a couple of hoops to go through. It's really nice to have a predictable effect yep. when something happens. So on a body that's ahead of the curve. Yeah. And incidentally, it's a squirrel. So this would be the fourth or fifth squirrel now for the squirrels matters. So many squirrels. So many squirrels. So many squirrels. I believe we have another gold card that currently our uh, screen is clipped uh, and we are unable to see it right now. So I'm going to try and pull up its name. Thank you, James. We have several. Jesus Christ, this is... All right. Uh, Vren the Relentless. Oh, yeah. This card is a nightmare from what I've heard. Uh, two blue and a black for a 3-4 legendary rat rogue with ward two. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. At the beginning of each end step, create X-1-1 one, one black rat creature tokens with this creature gets plus one plus one for each other rat you control, where X is the number cre of creatures your opponents controlled that were exiled this turn. Bunch of stuff going on here. So this plays like Kalidus Trader of Get. Uh, I think that's the exact name of the four drop, the four mana Kalidus, um, where it just has this incidental, like nice Sandy B deck. It'd be a shame if your whole combo <laughs> didn't work uh, aspect to it. That also was just relevant because you're playing black. So you typically have removal. Uh, Ward two makes it so much easier to play into the face of Caracas and even just in the face of anything. Right, like being able to, you can't deal with uh, this card if they just like play Chandra on curve, Torture Defiance, or Jace, or Wandering Emperor. Like, there's a lot of you know expensive spells that you would want to play out to match your opponent's four drop. They can't deal with this, making obviously swords and other pieces of removal uh, really difficult to do. I guess what I'm saying is Ward Two is a lot, mm. and then that last ability is so much better than making random 2-2 zombies. Sure. Like, 
this is a nightmare, especially because it doesn't matter how they were exiled. So if you play this card alongside other spells that exile, like, like swords or, or, well, they have to be in play. Like they had to have control. Oh, I'm them. sorry. Right, 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 right. But like playing it with swords or path or prismatic ending, just like getting you more rats and these rats get out of hand. I have seen these rats like admittedly in other formats, but they, they're by default a 2-2. The templating is very odd, right? Yeah. yeah. The X-1-1 one, one rat tokens that also have the ability, they each get plus one, plus one for each other rat you control. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what? Interesting. Yeah. Very big. Very big. I like this card. I, hmm. I am looking forward to trying this out in uh, blue-black X mid-range decks. Yeah, creatures your opponents controlled that were exiled this turn. So it's mm -hmm. a creature that died and then became exiled. Or if they ephemerate. Interesting. Yeah. Or any kind of flicker. Yeah, any whatever. kind of exile. Weird. Huh. Char oh, you charming prince, your uh, Stoneforge mystic? I'll make a rat. Huh. <laughs> huh. Yeah. All right. Next up, the Wander Tail Mentor. This is a two mana, two, two raccoon bard for a red and a green. Whenever you expend four, put a plus one, plus one counter on the mentor. So expend four is if you've spent four total mana on spells that turn. And it's a mana dork that taps for red or green. This is almost certainly a Gruel Monsters style deck. You play it early on. It can make your, it can accelerate you from two to four pretty easily or from, I mean, get you up to five a little bit ahead of the curve. And it is going to basically grow for free when you go dragon, 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 dra dragon, dragon. Just this card into an initiative creature. And now you have a three, three and an initiative creature because the, it gets bigger because you played Magic the yeah, Gathering. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Do you like it in, I, I don't know, if, like red, green, hoof? Probably not. Like this, You don't care about this in hoof. I don't think I want to play this in red, green, no. hoof. But for Gruul Monsters or, um, I mean, Nelson, this is the one that Nelson was yeah, yeah. on. Like Naya, actually. May he rest in peace. Oh, miss him. There's the uh, the Naya mid-range decks as well. This is pretty interesting. Yeah, this into Comet is pretty good. Yep. This into CZDZ, pretty good. Yeah. I, I like this card in red green X decks that are planning on playing four drops or planning on double spelling the next turn and using all their mana. Yeah. Yeah. The important part on expand is it's not a four drop, it's four mana total. The fourth total mana being yeah. spent on yeah. spells. Yes. Yep. Uh, Yigra, Eater of All. Three black and a green for a six six legendary elemental cat. Elemental. With war. <laughs> yeah, but this one doesn't have anything to do with all the other ones. <laughs> Ward, sacrifice of food. Other creatures are food in addition to their other types and have pay to generic tap sacrifice gain three life. Whenever a food is put into a graveyard from play, put two counters, two one one counters on Igra. Um, this was the only five drop I built or I put in my food deck that I built a couple of days ago. Sure. Um, it is incredible. Ward, sack of food which in this case also kind of just means ward sack a creature yep. is really gross. If you've played any pioneer and have ran into the vampires deck with vein ripper that has mm. the same ward cost, you'll know that the ward triggers, they sack their, uh, the ward triggers or sorry. They spend a removal spell on this ward triggers. You respond by killing their creature. They have no creatures anymore. They cannot pay ward. Is that how that works? Yeah. Because it's a triggered ability before the spell goes on the stack. They yeah. can't pay. Oh, my God. So you can make it so they can't pay the ward. And all while you're doing this, uh, Ygra gets bigger. I didn't even think. I mean, I've never encountered that interaction before. I would not have assumed it worked that way. Yeah, it's uh, real gross. Yeah. This this card just gets huge. Yeah. Also, nice Caracas. <laughs> yeah. And there's also that incidental templating of whenever food is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. That mm -hmm. worked earlier on with that other things being food yes. is kind of relevant. yeah. 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 I'm excited for Igra. Yeah. Big cat. Eldritch Evolution into this card. You'll, yeah. you'll love it. Oh, I, I plan to. We didn't open an extra copy. Nope. No, I, I'm drafting the set later today. And, I mean, this is maybe getting a little ahead of it. This is the first set that I've considered playing a pre-release since before the pandemic. Wow. Yeah, I am very, very hype. So, maybe I'll open one then. Mm -hmm. And the last gold card we're going to talk about today is Zorline Cosmos Caller. This is a three mana, three, three bat cleric for one, a white and a black. It has flying and vigilance. And whenever a bat you control attacks, gain a life. 
Whenever Zorlin enters or attacks, you may pay white, black, and gain two life. When you do... Sorry, did I miss the line there? Two, you said and gain two life. You may... You pay white and black and two life. Oh, I'm sorry. Pardon yeah. me. Yes, that is a, a reduction of life. The other one's a gain yes. life. Yes. When you do, return target non-land permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. This is remarkable. This is... You know what? Tell me how you're going to ruin my evening with it. I've, I'm going to ruin some evenings with this. Um, <laughs> yeah, the fact that this just has like kicker as well, secret kicker that is not associated to the cost. Um, and kicker, that means that if I cast unearth or reanimate to bring this back, then I can pay this to then bring something else back. Um, it doesn't have to be a creature. So this card bringing back, I mean, the example I'm going to give is technically a creature in the yard, but like, Zorline into Grist or Zorline into like Teferi or whatever. Bring back a Jite. Um, pretty wild. I like this card. It's, I mean, it's a three mana three, three flying vigilance that just gains a life, whatever it attacks, which is kind of nice. And then on attack, like the fact that you get this every attack, you can just keep bringing back things to like potentially protect Zorline and ruin your evening or just bring back additional threats. Um, yeah. All right, quick question here. Yep. So uh, color permutations that don't really have an established identity. So red-black is getting better now with this new card advantage exile thing. Mm -hmm. I have felt that Orzhov, I have felt that like an actual factual white-black deck has been in kind of an awkward point for a while. Yeah. We had DNT splashing black a little bit, but ultimately people have gone back to just mono white DNT because they figured the mana isn't worth the... Um, the card advantage of Bob or like a little bit of a hand attack or for disruption. Bowmasters or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then in Ruin Your Evening, again, it's it's not really doing what I would argue is like the Orzov thing. It's sort of taking advantage of a little bit of a sub theme, which is some of the life gain. But there's a lot of really cool, very powerful white black three drop legends that are uh -huh. sort of in this weird like hate bear, like um, I think it's Kornos the dog. Yeah. Three mana three three with seventeen keywords on it. Yeah, there's Campbell. There's like these, these sort of like I just wonder if that deck is getting real yet. Because all the cards are arguably powerful, but not powerful enough to warrant not just playing an archetype that executes that better. Right? Yeah, it's just like what what is the payoff yeah. for doing it outside of doing it just so you can play an Orzov deck? That's um, that's yeah, I think that's yeah. It. I I do think that ruin your evening is at the point where uh, Orzov is the best configuration. Sure, like you should just be playing black, um, getting access to again reanimate, unearth, shieldred, uh, you know, trying this card out, uh, playing the recurring nightmares if you want, bowmasters, like additional creature kill, or you can play hand attack if you want to try to shore up the combo match. Like, there's a bunch of benefits to playing black in that deck. Um, Typically, Orzov doesn't see play because, like, both the colors just do the same thing. It's also funny because you look at this deck and you're like, all right, what are the one and two drops that define what this deck is trying to do? And you're like, uh, huh. Like, Mom, Giver of Ruins, Esper Sentinel, those are all white. Yeah. Death Ray Chomp. And then, and then you're like, well, w why wouldn't I just play a better deck that normally plays those cards, right? Yeah. And I think that's the issue. Yeah. Hmm. Black-white is a great supporting color combo. Sure. Um, but by itself, it, you're a bit limited in what you are doing to take advantage of that. And maybe that'll change, you know, like, um, but considering how good the mana is in Highlander, it's just so much easier to be like, well, if I'm a reanimator deck, I should add blue. Well, if I'm a mid-range deck, I should just add like, uh, or if I'm a tokens red, deck, whatever. I should add red. If yeah. I'm a mid-range deck, I should add green, right? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's move on to lands. I gave you Zorlian, so I will yeah, take, take the Fountain Port. Fountain Port. Whew. This is a Planeswalker land, I kid. Or am I? Ooh. <laughs> tap, add a colorless. Two and tap to sacrifice a token and draw a card. Three and tap and pay a life to create a 1-1 one, one blue fish creature token. This one's not tapped, unlike the, the gift mechanic. And four and tap to create a treasure token. Now, we have seen similar cards like this before uh staff of domination is an example just these like slice and dice multifaceted ones mm -hmm. uh, this also kind of reminds me of trading post yep uh only in the pay a life to create a chump blocker sort of thing but i like this a lot uh, in particular the tap to sack a token to draw a card and the ability to create a token to later sack a card 
is a very powerful engine just by itself. And <laughs> the ability to like bank mana to create treasure tokens, which are artifacts, which are already kind of busted in decks that care about artifacts, which is most decks in Magic the Gathering right now. Uh, this is an unbelievably powerful utility land that you can put in so many strategies. Of course, keep in mind the downside of any time you include non-basic lands in your deck, particularly utility lands, how it's going to affect your curve, your game plan, and development of stuff. But this is... Yeah, you only get so many of these, but this is a pretty good one to consider. I'd even maybe consider playing this in, like, mono-white death and taxes. Because hmm. you're a deck that does play some tokens that get, you know, created through creatures that might find themselves chump blocking. You're a deck that has excess mana that might want to maybe use it for a card flow or making additional bodies. The treasure token part is not as good in that deck, but you're also a deck that could draw... Um, your Cauldra Complete or your uh, Not Entreat the Angels, the um, Ameria's... Oh, the Angel Land. Ameria's Backyard Barbecue Bonanza. Whatever, yeah. the, the Ameria's three, life, call. The three Ameria's life white on one side and the two four for yes. angels on the back side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have, you know, things that, like, that's the least exciting part of this card for me in that deck, but you do have a spot where you're like, well, I have five mana and I really need to hit seven mana so that I can play this big donkey of a magic card. Yep. So yeah, I, it's it's pretty good. Sack good of food. Card. Yep. Draw a card. Sack of food. Draw a card. And... L Sack a construct that's being targeted by removal spell. Draw a card. Yeah, that part's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and last and certainly least is <laughs> Three Tree City. Uh huh. Uh, it's a legendary land. As it enters, you choose a creature type. Tap, tap a colorless. Two, tap, choose a color. Add an amount of mana of that color equal to the number of creatures you control of the chosen type. So this card is bad. Um, <laughs> There are a lot of players that seem to think otherwise. They seem to compare this card to Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx, or to Nyx, or to Gaia's Cradle. Um, it is not that. Gaia's Cradle adds two mana, and that's it. Or more. Like, it, you know how much mana Gaia's Cradle needs to add to be busted? The answer is actually just one. It just... If it just adds, or to be playable, right? Just adds one. Obviously, Cradle can add so much more mana at such a low cost. Um, but that's not fair, because Gaia's Cradle is one of the most messed up lands of all time. So let's compare it to Nykthos, where Nykthos uh, has the same kind of filter ability, but off of uh, your Devotion. So if we are already playing to the board, which this card is going to require you to play to the board very heavily in a typal deck... Um, you are going to need to potentially overextend or extend quite a bit of resources. But Nykthos lets you do that in a variety of ways, either enchantments, planeswalkers, uh, occasionally equipment, you know, whatever. Or it just lets you play, you know, maybe one to two creatures that have double pipped mana cost in order for Nykthos to be up on mana for this card to break even on colored mana you need no well breaking even flat oh, you sure. need three creatures sure. right so in order for this to add colored mana you need three creatures like what are we doing here um it's yeah, I don't think this card's very good. I think that there are spots where, like, maybe, maybe, maybe you're like, ooh, but I'm an elves deck, and I have these elves that I could use. Or, like, I'm going to give you a terrible example, like a... I don't even want to give this example. I don't want to dignify it with a response. No example I won't. Needed. I won't. Yeah, yeah like, I'll, just, just don't play this card. Trust, trust me on this. Please, I'm begging you. Trust me on this. You're better without it. Sell your copy because like commander players are going to pay like a bajillion dollars for this thing. And you could buy real magic cards. You could buy every initiative creature mm. by selling this card. Is it worth that much right now? I mean, it's probably, it. I would imagine this card's like 30 bucks at least, maybe that, even more. That is correct. Do I know magic players or do I know magic players? Amazing. Huh? That is it. For our set review, ending on kind of an interesting note there with the Three Tree City. And now we move on to our segment uh, where we ask Wheeler his thoughts on the set. Wheeler. I think it's cool. I think that 
Uh, Bloomborough is going to be one of those sets that uh, the initial evaluation is like, thank God it's not Modern Horizons 3. Um, <laughs> but I do think this set has a bit more longevity than uh, some of the previous ones, like MKM or even like Outlaws, because a lot of the cards have different... Uh, flex points in how you play them out like offspring giving you you know a bunch of different options on when you cast cards cards like zoraline having etbs that you don't necessarily need to pay but you can treat it as though it's kicker right expend cards wanting you to like maybe not want to expose this until you can trigger the expend um and that usually leads to cards being more to, to being better more flexible being being uh more playable um in that they do different things at different times and they do it pretty efficiently no matter when you cast it so i'm looking forward to play with these cards there's nothing that like really jumps out as like this is going to revolutionize everything <laughs> and that's okay it's just some quality of life upgrades some juice to these underappreciated archetypes uh and more decision making at different mana values this is one of the most exciting sets i have i think encountered in memory for yeah. me uh i mean I've, I've been playing magic for a very long time i started in 94 i took a long break until original ravnica mm -hmm. i took a shorter break until original zendikar and i have played without pause since zendikar i well, mean now you have a ton of pause with all these animals i see what you did there uh the, the pandemic was a little bit shaky uh, I, I didn't. I, there's a there's a time where I wasn't quite sure how much I was going to come back to the hobby after that. But this, like I said, I'm I'm interested in going and playing in a pre-release, which I haven't done in <laughs> minimum four years. Short of judging pre-releases, I don't know if I've ever gone just to play just for fun. Right. Uh, it makes me feel nostalgic, both for um, like books like Redwall that I read as a kid, but also just it has such a fun amount of whimsy to it as well. Like it's got my it's got my like spiky self excited to try and brew you know Canadian Highlander one of the most powerful formats we have out there, but also be like hee hee bun bun, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and that's nice because I feel that this is what I wanted Eldrain to be, where it's got this nice little mix of familiarity and like fun and fantasy, uh, but also cards that are gonna like slay, mm -hmm. and I think they hit it out of the park with this one. It doesn't have to be an all star for our format to be an all-star in my heart I'm being very very sappy right now but again i think that it will get even for reasons that i didn't mention before i think that down the line this is a set to revisit or we're gonna look, look back at yeah. yeah and to like consider like the the green uh mist breath elder that nelson and i lost our yep. minds over yeah. <laughs> it's just like and you are like what are you guys doing sure like that's the thing that you have this whole generation of players that did not get to experience this card at a higher manner sure. go like oh well, now we can, like, what can we do with this? Because now it's so efficient, you know? And I think that's pretty, that's a great thing to see for the health of not only the format and for, for the brewing potential, but also also for a set. Like, I think we're going to be thinking about Bloomborough for a variety of reasons into, like, 2025. Hmm. When I, which is wild, because I've already forgot MKM. Just yeah. surveil lands and who cares? <laughs> Allah, yeah, Allah's a Thunder Junction as well. Yeah. Kind of shrug emoji. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That is going to do it for our set review. Thank you so, so much for joining us. I've been Serge, joined by Creepy Doll. Who? And <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and Wheeler. You all right there, bud? Thank you for having me. Please warn me next time. Shout out to James on tech. Still don't have any Doritos. We'll fix that, my friend. Don't worry. We'll get Doritos and we'll go play a pre-release together. How about that, bud? Okay. Please wash your hands before. <laughs> no. no, get those cheese all over the cards. No. Oh, no, my no, bunny. No mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. A reminder that everything we do is brought to you by you, their support over the Patreon, patreon.com slash loading ready run. If we missed any cards, if you're excited about specific cards, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.